to have a whole lot burning on my heart tonight, but, you know, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Here we can lift up his name and glorify him and thank him for his goodness. And as the song said, Lord, my heart is open. You know, won't you come inside? Fill up just part of me because there's other things I don't want you to touch right now. <laughs> but Lord, fill up all my being. Lord, forever to abide. I want him to abide in me forever, don't you? I want him to stay here with me forever. Because I've opened all my windows and swung wide every door. A lot of times we tell God he can go here, here, and here. But, you know, we've got keep out signs on other doors and areas in our life. But I certainly want to allow him full access into my life and to every area sometimes. And when... Those things hurt sometimes when he begins to show you what's you and, and things that, that, that's working in your life. But you know what? If you really truly love him and just like a father does his child, he'll show you what's wrong to help you grow up so you can get it right. And I'm telling you, I want to make it. I want to go all the way and uh, be more like him. Appreciate you guys' prayers about my promotion. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. That's all right. I got a raise and I got my weekends off. So, <laughs> you know, it ain't a big, big, fat raise, I can, like, see, but it's a raise. And God knows what he's doing. I'm not discouraged. You know, I see God's favor working with me there at the company and just in his timing, you know. Sometimes you think you deserve it because of what you know. You've been there before and you've done all this and you've done all that. But, you know, God knows that's okay. We're still moving along, and we're finally starting to get ahead of things that I never thought I'd begin to see the light. Now I'm excited about it. We're so deep in debt and bills. You can finally see, begin to see my way out. God's opened it where we can get to it, and I'm thankful for a wife that's it's a money manager, unlike me, who would want to <laughs> spend all kinds of things and, you know, but she takes care of me. She surprised me. I said, you know, we're doing this and, you know, rent's coming up or whatever. I said, oh, are we going to have it? She goes, oh, yeah, I just took some out of this here and put it aside and put it here. And just so when it comes, you know, we still got money in the bank and I don't have to worry about being flat broke. <laughs> but I'm excited and, and I owe it all to him. I don't want to take any credit credit for it. I don't want to take any anything that... that I don't deserve. I want to give it all to God because it's because of him. And he's worthy of all the praise. And I don't think they were just saying here, I want to stay single-minded. I want to keep my focus on him because there's so many things out here that will come, that are coming to distract us if we don't stay focused. If we don't keep our minds in the word of God, I believe Deuteronomy 6 tells you to, to put it on like frontlets between your eyes. Because... We've got to stay focused. We've got to continue to look to him. There's only one direction we can look at. We can't look to the east or to the west or look back. We've got to stay focused. There's only one direction God is, and I've got to keep looking that direction if I want to make it. And I got the scripture here when Brother Adams was up. I should have. Anyway, this is neither here nor there. And before. <laughs> and um, over here in Job 31. I want to, like Sister Hannah said, I want to have a pure heart. I want to have a pure heart. He says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want to see God, don't you? I got to have a pure heart, though, to see God. And I got to, you know, and I got to continue to come in here and allow God to purify my heart. Say, Lord, purify my heart. Cleanse and wash the very inward part. Lord, don't let a single thing hinder me from having that, to hinder me from building everything. How's the rest of that go? To yield in everything over to you that you want me to yield over. Because just, it's just like the more you see, the more beautiful he is. You know, Brother Am said all the time, he said he'd trade everything he knows now for what he don't know. Lord, help us. And it's just, it's just amazing how the more you grow in God and the more you lean on him and trust him, you just see how awesome and wonderful he is. And how beautiful he is. It's amazing. But over here in Job, he said, and I was thinking this, Brother Adams talking about being single-minded and having a single heart. 
and staying focused and not getting distracted. He says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. He says, why then should I think upon a maid? Now, here Job's talking about a natural woman. Did he want to look on upon a natural woman? So he made a covenant with his eyes. But you know, we need to make a covenant with our eyes at the same time that I'm not going to take it off the Lord. That I'm not going to stay focused on the goal that he's got set for me. Then I'm not going to allow anything to come in here and distract. There's so many things, so many beautiful things that, that look beautiful on the outside. He says, uh, was it Paul says, he says, uh, sin is pleasure for what? A season. It may look good for a minute, but in the end, it's going to bring death to your soul. But if I could stay focused and make a contract and say, Lord, this is the way I'm going. This is the way you got me set. Help me to make a contract, not just with my natural eyes, but with my spiritual eyes. That I'm going to look upon the right things, Lord. And I'm not going to get loud distractions to come in because they will come in. He says when uh, over there in James, I believe it is, he said that, uh, he says, your adversary, the devil, is just like a roaring lion going about seeking whom it may devour. And if I give any little bit, if I give any little, you know, inch to that, he's finally found a way in, don't he? He's finally got that foothold he could begin to work with. So he began to take hold of that and begin to draw me. But Lord, draw me after you. And I'll run after you. I don't want these things in the world to draw me. Yeah, I like nice things. I like my toys. I like my electronics, my truck, and all this good stuff. But, Lord, I don't want that to be my life. I want this to be my life. We sing that song, this is my life. This is what I live for. Just to be with God's people. And it's how, you know, we're living in a dark hour. We're living in a dark time right now. They're shooting Christians all over this world right now. Luckily, it hasn't gotten here yet like it is over there. But I'm going to tell you, it's coming. A lot of people don't believe it, but it's coming. And we got to be have a foothold here. we got to be solid in the Word of God so when it does come, then my focus is still on the right thing. I'm not allowing that to distract me. I'm saying still, I'm still on fire for the Lord. I'm still calling upon the name of Jesus because he's been so good to me. He's so wonderful. And, you know, and he just, I don't want to get distracted. I don't want anything to come in here and hinder me from doing what God wants me to do. And it's so easy. It's so easy if we're not careful. I believe over there in Proverbs, he says, he says, keep your heart with all diligence. Lord, help me to guard my heart. Help me to not let anything else take my heart away from you. Lord, because out of it, because what has my heart, that's what I'm going to run after. What has my heart, I'm going to run after that. I'm going to meditate on that. I'm going to be, as soon as I get up, I'm going to be thinking about it. So I'll go out through my day, instead of thinking on the Lord, I'm going to think what my heart's upon. You know, and I, it's funny because when I want something, I'll think upon it all day long and figure out what I can do to get it. You know, and I'm learning, you try to rob Peter to pay Paul, but when you rob Peter... Paul ain't getting paid either. <laughs> because, you know, you, you try to concoct this idea in your mind that you can do this, but it, it, it fails in the end. But if I can learn to wait upon the Lord. Scripture says over there in Proverbs 30, it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. I don't want to faint in this way. You know, if I'm allowing something else to get a hold of my attention and distract me, it's a weary thing. It's so easy to faint. But if I can focus on the Lord, what's that other one where Paul said? He said, when I am weak. He says, that's when I'm strong. When I'm trusting in the Lord and my focus is on him and I'm allowing him to guide my steps, that's when I'm strong because he's my strength. He says he's a very stronghold. He, he, no, I must be thinking of another one. In a time of trouble. Nahum 1 and 7. I don't want to misquote it. Yeah, he says, the Lord is good. He says, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he that do what? He that know him. I don't want to know him. I don't want to just know about him. I want to know him. Paul said, and Brother Adams used that scripture here the other day. He said, where Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. 
Look, I want to know this man, Jesus, that saved my soul. Lord, help me. I know we've got to go through some things, and I'm not where Sister Wyrick is, you know. Let's bring it on. <laughs> I mean, even though we know it's coming. But you know what? The Lord knows exactly what we need, don't he? Yes, sir, yes, sir. He knows when to turn it up. He knows when to back it off. But you know what that's doing? That's teaching me to know the Lord. Yeah. That's teaching me to know him. That's causing me to lean upon him when those things come. He says, and he that knoweth them are going to do something. He says, they that them that trust in him. He knoweth them that trust in him. God knows you when you trust in him. He knows you when you ain't trusting in him. Look, I want to know this man, Jesus, and I want to stay focused. I want to make that covenant with my eyes that I'm not going to allow anything to come in and distract me from staying right, staying on the focus and the goal that he's got for me. God bless you.